Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White the Third here to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back soon and that you need to be prepared. You need, we all need to get ready. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates, as some foolishly have. However, it is all about preparation. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. The disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world. Looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, and let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming. Pardon me. Uh, that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First up today. A plan for the United uh, Nations, a plan for the United Nations to control the entire Internet is under consideration. According to the Hindu news in its proposal uh, submitted to the General Assembly in New York, India, has urged for a radical shift from the present internet model of multi-stakeholder led decision making to a purely government run multilateral body that would relegate civil society, private sector, international organizations as well as technical and academic groups. The proposal has been floated without any public consultation uh, whatsoever. India is pushing for the creation of a forum called Committee for Internet Related Policies to develop internet policies, oversee all internet standards, uh, bodies and policy organizations. Uh, negotiate internet related treaties and sit in judgment when internet related disputes come up. Uh, the catch is that India's formal proposal is for CIRP to be funded by the UN, run by staff from the UN's Conference on Trade and Development uh, arm and report directly to the UN. General Assembly, which means it will be entirely controlled by the UN's member states. India's proposal could prove controversial for 
uh, multi-stakeholder communities, communities rather, within the country and across the world. Since it entails moving away from the prevailing democratic equal say process for internet governance to one in which governments would be front and center. Secondly, today Israel remains skepti skeptical of Iranian nuclear deal with the UN. According to the Associated Press, Israel's defense minister voiced skepticism on Tuesday over an agreement by Iran to open up its nuclear facilities to UN inspectors, saying the Iranians are trying to create a deception of progress to stave off international pressure. The cool reception from defense minister Ehud Barak signaled that Israel will not ease up pressure on the international community to curb Iran's nuclear program. Israel has repeatedly hinted it is ready to use force if it concludes international diplomacy has failed to stop the Iranians. <clears throat> Thirdly today, Israeli general says country will have to face air defenses from Syria and Hezbollah. According to Israel, Hayam Deputy Chief of Staff Major General Yair Naveh said in the event of a future conflict with neighboring hostile countries, Israel will need to allot several hours to neutralizing its enemies air defense systems before taking any other action. Israel's enemies have been investing heavily in air defense. Syria has invested three billion dollars towards uh, toward its uh, buildup of such systems and that amount of investment suggests that Damascus considers air defense as being of greater importance than other military projects. Naveh also warned that Hezbollah has amassed 60,000 rockets and missiles, which is 10 times the size of its stockpile in 2006, uh, the second uh, Lebanon war. Ladies and gentlemen, you can read these stories in depth and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy, uh, the fundamentals, if you will, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible the Word of God. Our aim here is not to make predictions but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. <clears throat> Our topic for today is titled The Program for the Church. From John MacArthur's book The Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ MacArthur writes the following on this subject. The passage in Acts 15 is one of the most critical dispensational passages in Scripture. As James, the brother of Jesus, gives a brief summary of the purposes of God to the Jerusalem Council, commenting on Peter's report that Gentiles were getting saved, and quoting Amos 9, 11, and 12, James gives an order of events in God's plan. This order is as follows. Number one, the gathering of the church. Acts 15.14 says, Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. Israel rejected their Messiah. So God turned to the Gentiles to take out a people. 
The Greek word for church is ecclesia and is derived from ek, which means out, and kaleo, which means to call. In other words, the church is comprised of those who are called or taken out. Secondly, the return of Christ to the church. Acts 15, 15, and 16a says, And to this agree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return. After the church is completely gathered, the rapture occurs and the church is removed. Seven years later, Christ returns to the earth. Third, the setting up of the kingdom. Acts 15, 16b says, And will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. When it says that Jesus comes back and rebuilds the house of David, it just means that he sets up the kingdom and reigns as king on David's throne. <clears throat> Fourth, the subjection of the nations to Christ. Acts 15.17 says that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. God can't finish his plan with Israel until he finishes his plan with the church. Jesus must return because the church age can't end if he doesn't. And if the church age doesn't end, Pardon me. And if the church age doesn't end, then the after this of verse 16 doesn't exist. And if there is no after this, there is no kingdom either. So we find then that the sequential plan of God found here in Acts 15 is that God first gathers his church. When he's done with that, he comes back and works with Israel. Then he sets up his kingdom and the Gentile nations come to the throne in subjection to his rule. Presently, he's still gathering his church. But until he's finished with that, nothing else in the plan can happen. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, Let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. God wants us to understand that we are in spiritual warfare and he wants us to fight. In light of that, please listen to what Dr. David Jeremiah writes in his book titled, I Never Thought I'd See the Day When Christians Wouldn't Know They Were In a War. Uh, the actual title of the book is I Never Thought I'd See the Day. Uh, but inside the book, one of the chapters continues that thought by saying, when Christians wouldn't know they were in a war. This is part 10. Satan has an undetected enemy. Satan as an undetected enemy continued. When I hear individuals who profess to be Christians express disbelief in the reality of Satan and his demons, I wonder about the source of their beliefs. The Bible could not be more clear about the existence of the devil and the reality of the spiritual conflict going on all around us. Let's look once again at Ephesians chapter 6. Verses 10 through 12. The Bible reads, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Each time Paul mentions another class of spiritual beings, he reaffirms that we wrestle against them. The word against appears six times in these three verses. Think of an oarsman rowing his boat against the current. He is trying to make progress in one direction while the current seeks to take him the opposite direction. We are trying to make progress toward the kingdom of God and Satan turns the current of the world in the opposite direction resisting us with every stroke of the oar. And folks, that is happening to us today. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. We praise you and we thank you for the clarity that we find in your holy word. We thank you for showing us from your holy word and uh, even from alongside uh, the newspapers that your holy word is happening before our eyes today. We praise you and thank you for allowing us to live in these exciting times. And we thank you for the future that you have planned for us. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the rapture of the church, the hope that one day we will be snatched out of this sin-cursed, evil, and ungodly world. We thank you for the biblical facts that point to that. And we thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we are in spiritual warfare and even if we do not want to fight, we had better fight. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to do so in these last and evil days. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you're listening to this broadcast today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, God wants you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today before uh, the Lord returns. And he could return today. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> now, a friend of mine, if you are willing to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please pray with me the following simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done bad things in my life. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried and rose again, that he shed his blood on the cross for my sins. Lord Jesus, the best I know how, please save me. Please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you prayed that prayer, you are now saved. If you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried and rose again. Congratulations on doing the most important thing you will ever do in life. You will never regret it. Until we meet again, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew twenty four forty two. Watch therefore, for ye know not to what hour your Lord doeth come. Matthew twenty four forty four says, Therefore be ye also ready, 
for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, bcnradio7.com, gospelightworldradio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now, here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your